Okay. Okay, perfect. Making again. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to uh, continue with the week number eight. Although I skipped some uh, weeks, like two weeks, because I think that this lecture is tightly linked to the previous lecture that we already explained about food control systems, okay? So um, as I told Zahra before that uh, you come, all of you, by next week we will be having a quiz on Moodle. Uh, so a quiz on Moodle is a, a list of MCQs that you will click on. It's a very simple system, okay? So next week we can agree on a timing and I prefer to make it around nine if you want to make sure that all of you uh, uh, are able to join. And even the quiz, you can make it from the mobile, okay? So it has a starting time and an end time, and uh, you have a list of MCQs. It will include uh, mainly uh, the chapters of introduction, foodborne illnesses, and uh, the first uh, lecture of control system, food control system. So I will, uh, I will send you an announcement on Moodle mentioning the chapters, okay? So concerning uh, this lecture, uh, as you can see, we have a list of learning objectives. So first of all, we talked last time that in a food control system, we have four main uh, departments. Who can tell me what are the four main departments in any food control system? Who can recall these four departments? So what do we need basically in a food control system? And, uh, regulations with laws. Exactly, so a department mainly working on laws and regulation, a department mainly working on analysis, a department laboratory services. working on laboratory services and a department Special working on services. communication, education, and training. Yes, but this, exactly. But these four departments should be uh, managed by a food control management. So we're going to see uh, what kind of tasks this control, food control management uh, has. We're going to talk as well about the four different uh, departments and about the inspection approach. Okay. So مين في عيد لي أربعين دقيقة تنوقف عشان ما تسكر السيشن 33؟ So better يمكن around 9 to stop and to open another session. Okay, so why the components and priority of a food control system vary from a country to country? So irrespective of if we do have modifications between the countries, all the way we have to respect this hierarchy starting by a managerial level and comprising the four departments that I already talked about the food laws and regulation, the inspection services, the laboratory services, and the fourth department, which is information, education, communicating, and training. So when I say food control management, what does it mean? It means a managerial level that will effectively control the system by enacting policies and by coordinating at the national level. How can we do that? It's very important to adopt an integrated national food control strategy. So as I mentioned before, when I talk about integration, I mentioned that it's very important to involve all the ministries. And this is what I'm pinpointing here. So here I'm talking about the importance of involving the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Economy, the Ministry of Public Health. So all of them should be involved in order to uh, fulfill the needs of the four different departments. Because as we mentioned before, when we will, and as I asked you in the assignment, so now we don't have this food control system in Lebanon. So till now we have a multidisciplinary approach and every single ministry is dealing with the food control uh, inspection. But later on when we'll be having this food control system, everything should be centralized in one uh, system and they will assign tasks for the different departments. So this managerial level will assist as, as well in securing funds and allocating resources. Why do we need funds? We need funds to equip the laboratories, to train the inspectors. We need resources to build the new laboratories as well, or to have centralized lab, accredited, definitely public lab. So we need as well the managerial level support in setting standards and regulation, especially by communicating with the other countries by participating in international food control related activities such as FAO, WHO, or even Codex Alimentarius, and by developing an emergency response procedures, basically with respect to the recall, for example. So can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. And by carrying out risk analysis. So let's start by the first department. When we say food law and regulation, 
So we are talking about legislation. Legislation, in Arabic, we are talking about okay? So food legislation, we need to enforce the food legislation in order definitely to protect the consumer from being offered unsafe and adulterated food. But when we talk about legislation in general, we see that they are being split into two. We have what is called primary control. So primary control here mainly talking about the law. And we have the secondary control, mainly talking about regulation and standards. So as I mentioned before, it's difficult to update a primary control. It's difficult to update a law, but it's easy to update a secondary control, such as the standards and regulations. And why do, why do you think we need to update the regulation and the standards? Why do we need to update our standards? Hello? You can hear me, girls? Okay. Why do we need to update? To what? Be up to date, yeah. Anyway, but come in. In wake of the tower and sense of finding a new contaminants. So we all know that on a daily basis, new contaminants can be uh, 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 triggered, new contaminants can affect the food. So, for example, I can tell you that 10 years ago, uh, we, the, we, we were not able to include mycotoxin part in our standards because we were not aware about this contaminant. But nowadays, it's very important to have a special part for mycotoxins in every single standard. And why we, we are obliged, obliged to update our standard and integrate the mycotoxins part? Because we are facing many uh, problems and uh, many uh, uh, life-threatening uh, uh, cases due to mycotoxins, okay? So it's very important to update regulation and standards. So here again, what does it cover a law? So I assume that you have looked at the Lebanese uh, uh, draft of the Lebanese law. So all the way, we start by basic legal definition. When I say legal definition, it's different than the dictionary definition. It's a legal definition. We have as well the responsibilities for implementation. So we have what is called a legal power. So an inspector has a legal power. So in, the, uh, in this part, we will see that we do have responsibilities for implementation. So in this part, we will mention every single department, what kind of responsibilities they do have. We mention as well the inspection and analytical requirements. And what are the penalties, the sanctions, the in case a party did not respect a law, okay? So food laws does not provide uh, food authorities with a clear authority and detail. The details will be embedded in their standards so, or regulation. So the standard or the regulation is the interpretation of the law. So the law is very broad uh, and no details cannot be updated. So in the law, for example, we say the food should be safe and uh, uh, do not cause harm for human beings but they do not specify how come the food, it will be safe. But in the, standard, in the standards, we'll be having like, uh, I don't know, maybe 10,000 standards for different types of food, mentioning in details how the food uh, should be safe by uh, uh, respecting a certain level of contaminants, whether physical, biological, or chemical, okay? So regulation, they do contain the detailed controls that can be reviewed uh, periodically and can be easily amended. So we can amend the regulation. Here in Lebanon, we have technical regulations issued by the ministries. So we have obligatory. It's obligatory. It's obligatory. Lebanon should be enacted by the Ministry of Industry Taikun Obligatory. So Libnar, Mu'assasit Libnar, he Mu'assasit Tib Ala, Wizart Sina'a. So as a Wizart Sina'a, but oh, this standard is obligatory and should be uh, used, okay? Bihal Hali Bisir Obligatory, okay? So examples of food regulations, they can cover composition, additives, contaminants, hygiene, processing conditions, packaging, labeling requirements, storage and distribution, food supplements, licensing, inspection, and analysis of food. And I can tell you that we do have standards for all of these and we have also more standards covering many other contaminants. Of food. So passing to the third department, the inspection services. So here, this department, our, the performance of this department mainly relies on qualified inspectors, honest, 
efficient and very well trained, okay? So sometimes the problem and the inspector is not that he's not honest. Sometimes he doesn't have the know-how. Sometimes he's not well trained. Sometimes he doesn't have tools to analyze. And this will, uh, you know, he will lose credibility. And as I'm going to see the temperature, not the thermometer, he will lose credibility. So we should know that the inspector has a key function in the food control system because he's the one who has a day-to-day -day contact. Yeah, the inspector who is going to the earth and going to the based on the regulation. Okay, he's sending samples to the laboratory. So just see how the four departments are being connected to each other. So the inspection, the inspector will go on site. He will inspect. He will give. Uh, uh, he will inspect based on the regulation enacted by the Department of uh, Laws and Regulation, and then the inspector will come up, so some, some uh, testing, he can do them on site, some other testing more advanced, he's obliged to send them to the laboratory. So here comes the role of the third department, which is the laboratory department. And by the end, training, education, and communication, so as a department linked to the three other departments. So what is the role of the, the inspector? And we will see in the coming slides that this lecture will mainly focus on the role of the inspector and how he should approach an industry, okay? So the responsibility of the inspector includes, first of all, he should check for the compliance. So when I say compliance, يعني تطابق. تطابق with what? With hygienic requirements of standards and regulation. He can check for HACCP implementation. So for the students who did not take yet the food safety course, so HACCP is a food safety system. He should take samples, okay? So samples, are evidences, يعني إثبات, يعني أنا, if I, I say, I went to this industry and basically their cans were swollen, okay? So التنك عندهم كانوا نفخين. إذا ما عندي sample تنكي بتقول إنه this can is swollen, I don't have an evidence, so automatically I, I missed some part of my inspection. So sampling is very crucial, it's very important. It's the cornerstone of the inspection because later on, if you are obliged to go to the court, يعني إذا أنا بدي روح على المحكمة وأدي X industry, if I don't have a sample, as if I did not do the inspection, okay? So, okay, ten, okay. So it's very important to identify the good, which is unfit for human consumption, and automatically to take the remedial action. So also he can do some simple testing, sensory testing, just by, by organoleptic assessment, he can smell the food to tell whether this food is spoiled or not, or he can look at the food by observation. So it's very important, again, uh, to collect any sample violating the law to assist the prosecution, يعني المحاكمة بالكورت, بالمحكمة, okay? So also the inspection can ask about the import-export activity of the food industry and he can check some samples, uh, whether exported or imported, يعني عم نحكي raw materials imported or end product exported, and again, he can audit the HACCP system, okay? So number four, here we are talking about the laboratory. So the laboratory, definitely the first time I want to invest in the laboratory, I need a big capital, okay? So with the Rasmalik Kbir to invest in the laboratory. But what is really important in the laboratory is not only the first investment, it's really important to maintain the laboratory. If you look at the laboratory, we have a lot of different things. If you look at the laboratory, you can see 30 equipment, 10 of non-functional. Because we can see maintenance alone. So maintenance in the laboratory, it's very important. Maintenance of the equipment. And that's why I always say, try to purchase an equipment easy to be used and easy to be fixed. So, كتير بصير, كتير بصير هيك مشاكل, by the way, not only in the laboratories, even in the industries. I can tell you, إنه يوم أفوت على معامل بلاقي مكانات كتيرة, مثلاً مكانات labeling, مكانات filling, بتكون حقها يعني مثلاً خمسين ألف دولار, ستين ألف دولار لما تزعق ما عرفوا يصلحوها, خلص بتصير مكبوبة. So, كتير كتير مهم ال maintenance إن كان بال بال industry أو بال laboratory. So, the laboratory should be involved in uh, uh, in performing physical, microbiological, and chemical analysis, all the, 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 the tests should be standardized and based on standards, okay? Um, if I already uploaded a Libnor standard, I can upload a Libnor standard on the 
on Moodle and a codex system. They just go to the microbiological section. In the microbiological section, for example, let's say for chicken, they write Salmonella 0 CFU per mil, E. coli 10 CFU per mil, etc. But you have a special column, ISMA procedure or method used, okay? So, is how we analyze Salmonella and chicken? If I ask you how we do this, what kind of reference we should use? We should use ISO procedures, conventional methods. يعني الطرق الصحة, ISO procedures, لهني conventional methods. بس أنا رح أشوفه إنه كتير مرات بينعمل promotion. I don't know if you received sometimes email from Mifosa or from other food safety companies talking about rapid tests. So do you think rapid tests are accurate? Are they reliable? No. Okay, so if you tell me rapid tests, they are more qualitative. Who can tell me what is the difference between the qualitative and quantitative test? The qualitative, but in as a few or not, quantitative, but in a different. Exactly. So as Anna, if I want to uh, to check the conformity, can I rely on a qualitative test? Definitely no. I need to perform a quantitative test, and that's why. A laboratory to be a standardized laboratory, he should respect the ISO procedure used for every single bacteria strain or for every single chemical. So the laboratory work should be standardized, should be efficient, and it should be accredited. I can tell you that the accreditation used for laboratory is called ISO 17025. ISO 17025 is a special accreditation for laboratories dealing mainly with reliability. So we make sure that this lab is reliable. How? By having a good repeatability. And as Anna, I perform the test twice in the same lab, I should obtain the same result. And by good accuracy. So repeatability is very important. Accuracy is very important and reliability, okay? Reliable, يعني في اعتماد على accurate, يعني دقيق. Repeatability, يعني لما عيد التست, I'm obtaining the same result. And usually, to be able to obtain these three parameters, the lab should perform a good calibration for all the apparatus, okay? So, what is calibration? Do you know? Girls, can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay, so calibration. Does it mean to zero, zero, the idols make it, it's not standard. The Lisa must assess them. Okay, but I'm going to ask you to tell me if you're going to do a recording or not. Okay, so. Calibration, exactly, as you mentioned, is when you make sure that the apparatus is working properly. So to calibrate, for example, a scale, we need to bring uh, uh, reference weights, okay? So if you, you can never rely on a non-calibrated apparatus because the measurement will not be correct. So the fourth department is information, education, communication, and training. So in this department, uh, uh, we need uh, uh, experts to assist us in the three other departments. Uh, we need um, to perform uh, different types of trainings to educate. And you should know that the inspector, inspector uh, part of the job of the inspector is to educate because if he is inspecting a butchery or he's inspecting a bakery, and they have no idea about food safety, so he should educate them, he should train them, and this fits under the umbrella of education, communication, and training. But to be able to do so, he should be very well trained, the inspector himself. So what about the inspection approach for food processing facilities? So we do have a special approach for inspection. There is a homework to be done before uh, visiting any premises, so the inspector should have a preparatory phase to be ready for the inspection. He should do a kind of a scheduling. I can tell you that an inspection could be sometimes a response to a trade complaint or to a consumer complaint. If I'm going to 
فتحت أنينة ملك من عند ديلي خوري once I opened okay the milk was somehow spoiled okay so ممكن يروح يعمل inspection based on the consumer complaint وبيسوى يجي trade complaint يعني مثلا يجي complaint ما بعرف from Morocco talking about a product produced by Dolly saying that the ketchup is once received was spoiled okay so it's a trade complaint يعني من برا جاية Okay, come in, they do inspection based on this kind of complaints, and by default, they do regular inspection, and definitely they do inspection based on prioritization. What does it mean, prioritization? Yeah, if lately we are suspecting a problem at the level of antibiotic residues in Lebanon, so the inspectors should mainly focus on the farms and on the poultry farms and on the poultry production and uh, chicken processing uh, industries. So we have a general preparation of the meeting and we have a list of steps to be respected in the, on opening the meeting and in closing the meeting. So when the meeting means I mean, the inspector, once he will reach the industry, he asks for a meeting with the managerial level. So here we should have the general manager, the quality manager, production manager, purchasing manager, uh, warehouse, uh, 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 warehouse keeper, you can maintenance manager. So all the managers together, so they do what is called the opening meeting, and once they finish everything, they do a closing meeting. And definitely we will talk as well about the inspection techniques that he should have with him. So inspection approach, it's very important to use a risk-based approach ahead of inspection. Yani if I'm going to inspect an industry of chocolate, so ahead of the inspection, I need to do my homework, okay? So he's mentioning that uh, we can use more than 40 minutes. Okay. So uh, ahead of the inspection, uh, he should uh, uh, work on checking the risk factor. So again, I'm giving the example of a chocolate factory. If he's willing to visit uh, by next week a chocolate factory, so he should think about the factors occurring in a chocolate factory. So specifically, the problems right now are with respect to the allergens. So if we have chocolate plain and chocolate with peanuts, and we are producing both on the same line, so probably he will be facing this kind of problem. So he is going to emphasize on inspecting this line and checking how they are cleaning in between the lines, okay? So this is what is called risk-based inspection. So to inspect based on a certain risk, or if he's willing to check on, on mycotoxins and chocolate. So here, he should ask more for the analysis uh, uh, that has been done for chocolate, etc. okay? And he can also check on the progression of HACCP implementation if they are implementing it. So inspection scheduling, he will schedule the inspection. And usually we have a frequency of inspection, okay? Yeah, and for example, if we have a certain type of product, very stable, not facing problems at all. We should not inspect every now and then, but if we are dealing with a certain type of product, facing problems all the time, we should emphasize on increasing the frequency of inspection for this type of field. What did we say and the inspection could be a response to consumer and trade complaints, okay? So in this case, we do not announce inspections. We do not announce inspections in all cases, okay? If it is a regular inspection, so simply the inspector will call the industry, Anna, on Monday, I'm going to visit your premises to do my inspection. When it is a regular inspection, it's based on a consumer complaint or on a trade complaint. But if the complaint is mainly based on a consumer complaint or trade complaint, he should not announce the inspection. He will do a drop inspection. So he will, he will do a kind of a surprise for the company. Okay, so general preparation. First of all, it's very important to allocate sufficient time. يعني مش أقول أنا ولا رايح على بقى خلينا أعمل ثلاث أربع معامل سوا شيلون من درب لا. I need to allocate sufficient time for every single industry. So I need to allocate a full day if the industry has different lines. If the industry, for example, like Dolly's, has only one line, it's fine. I can do two industries in one day. So it's up to me to decide. But I should I should not overwhelm my schedule because I need to allocate sufficient time for every single industry. Number two, I should be dressed appropriately. Yani I can tell you that uh, uh, you can never uh, trust an inspector who's not being dressed appropriately. Yani frequent trail inspector, gloves, okay? So you cannot trust him. So he should be the idle 
uh, uh, for the food handlers, okay, and for the operators as well. So he should select the protective devices, مثل ما قلنا, and inspection tools and materials. Most probably, we use a pH meter portable, a thermometer portable. We uh, use uh, a polarimeter to check the polarity of the oil to see whether the oil has been used several times. And what is really important to pinpoint here is to take copies of regulation and applicable forms. Yani, if I'm going to visit a, an industry of chicken, it is obligation to take with me chicken standard of Lebanon. Because if I'm going to tell him you're not respecting the standard, he will tell me how come I'm respecting the standard. I will tell him just see the copies. Here is the copy with me. You can see that you are not respecting the standard. So it's very important to have with us copies of regulation that we are going to use. For example, as I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about co-packing. إنه كيف حدا بيعبي عن حدا البرودكت، سو في عنا سبيشال ستاندرد فور ليبلينج، سو اي نيد تو تيك ا كوبي وذ مي فور ليبلينج اند تيل هيم ذات يو دونت هاف ذا رايت فور اكزامبل تو يوز ات، اند اتس فيري امبورتنت تو بي بونكتشوال، يعني اذا قلت لهم ام جوينج تو كوم ات ناين، اي نيد تو كوم ات ناين، سو اوبننج ميتنج بس يقعدوا بفوت الانسبكتور بيقعد مع المدراء بيقول لهم ليتس ستارت ذا اوبننج ميتنج، سو فيرست اوف اول ام هير توداي First of all, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Nadar Dara, inspector coming from the food control system here in Lebanon. And today I'm going to uh, mainly uh, do a full inspection for your premises. I'm going to start with the production department. I'm going to go over the different lines of production. Then I will pass to the quality department. So kind of, I will uh, inform them about the uh, 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 scheduling of the inspection, okay? Uh, what is the objective of my inspection? The objective of my inspection is to assist and help you to see whether you have uh, some non-conformities. And uh, this is the outline, مثل ما قلنا. And here I can, I need to assure the management of confidentiality. يعني بدي قلو إنه كل شيء حشوفه هم بالمعمل حيدلو بالمعمل ليه بدي قلكن إنه one of the tasks of the inspector who will to give advice. يعني هو بجرب انه يساعد الاندستري بيعطيهم نصايح، بس ما في يقول له مثلا لمعمل هوا تشيكن انه امبارح كنت عم تنميه وشفت انه they are using for example quaternary ammonium to disinfect the chicken. Why don't you use quaternary ammonium? I cannot say so. It's, it is confidential, but I can tell him um, lately I'm, I'm hearing about using quaternary ammonium to disinfect the chicken. Why don't you think about this? So, I can give them tips or advices, but I am not allowed to mention the name of another industry. So ensure management collaboration. So I need to engage the managerial level, especially the top management. I need to tell them I'm here to help, to assist. Please show me what kind of problems you do have. So while closing the meeting, I want to close. Uh, first of all, try to be all the time Uh, positive. Yeah, and try to start with positive findings. And خلصنا الانسبكشن. أو شيء بقولن. Really, guys, I want to congratulate you for all the effort being made. I'm really impressed. It's a, uh, it's a, a really, uh, 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 it's an important. It's it's really uh, impressive how you are implementing food safety systems. Okay. And here I pinpoint some relative positive findings. Masa, I'm really impressed by the pasteurizer that had been used. I'm really impressed by the IQF system that you do have, blah, 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 blah. However, however, while doing the inspection, I figured out some non-compliance, or violation, and here, let's sit and agree on a corrective action plan. How we will correct, okay? And here we can discuss possible improvement of the system. I finished the report, I sign, they sign, mainly represented by the top managerial level, and I schedule a follow-up inspection visits to verify the corrections. If uh, over three visits they will not uh, respect the improvement or they will not abide by the corrective action plan, here, okay, penalty, sanction, okay? Doctor? Yes. انت اذا لقيتي مثلا بمصنع في شيء مش مزبوط لنقول مصنع دجاج كانوا عم يستعملوا okay. انتيبايوتيك او اي شيء بحق لك تقولي لل... يعني تنشر هيدا الشيء انه منه مزبوط بس لصحه العالم اوكي okay. اذا اذا انا عم تحكي از ساينتست اي كان دو ذس يس بس از ساينتست ام نوت الاو تو منشن نيمز يعني نحن بالببليكيشن اول ذا تايم 